Greetings Duplicant and welcome to the breach. Behind the scenes I've done a little bit more digging out of the biomes but now we've come to a point where I need to do some work. I need to make sure the base is using renewable resources. The first one of those we're going to do is tie in our self-powered oxygen maker into our cool polluted water geyser. I had been feeding the oxygen maker from the polluted water from the slime biome but we've now run out of that water as you can see. I do have a tank of clean water in reserve for the oxygen maker but without any fresh water going in there's no way to cool the oxygen going out. I'm going to tie this geyser into the self-powered oxygen maker for cooling and a supply of water. In my head I thought this was a cool slush geyser because it was in the salt biome so I didn't get rid of the salt water when I uh, built the storage area. So now I have a mixture of uh, salt water and polluted water. So I need to make sure that's filtered properly before it goes into the self-powered oxygen maker. Because of the power spine I've got easy access to electricity. So I'm just going to build a transformer here and tie that into the pump. As I've accessed the oil biome I now have a plentiful supply of lead to make the conductive wires out of as well which is very very nice. We're now going to add a desalinator to the cell powered oxygen maker as the Rodriguez is in use and I can't take it offline for any serious amount of time. I'm going to have to work around my already existing setup so I'm going to add to the desalinator and then use bridges to tie it into the system. The piping isn't going to look smooth but who really cares about that it's going to work which is the main thing. You can see me pause and hesitate as I'm thinking through the problem of how to tie it together so there's no feedback loops in the system or I end up uh, messing the uh, loop up. The benefit of having this set up now is that any time I decided to add any water to the pipeline it will automatically get sieved or desalinated depending on what kind of water it is. The modules will only draw power when they're actually in use so it's not like it's drawing lots of power to having them idle and sat on the grid. I'm going to cut the pipe going from the sieve into the water storage tank transfer it directly into the salinator and the salinator is already feeding into the storage so that is the loop complete. We'll spill a little bit of water onto the ground but it's not like it's going to be a hazard, it's not in a hot environment so it's not going to turn directly into steam. As you can see the desalinator doesn't activate or take any damage when clean water is passing through it. I was going to build the long run from the water geyser to the Rodriguez. I'm going to use insulated granite pipes to stop the transfer of heat from the environment and warming the water up before it gets to the oxygen maker. And there we have it, the cool water is now flowing. It's uh, minus 2.6 degrees Celsius, so that's going to help cool down the oxygen as it leaves the Rodriguez. So the oxygen leaving the spawn naturally comes out at around 56 degrees Celsius. The chilled water will loop past all of the pumps and then out to the sieve and the desalinator. Eventually leaving us with oxygen coming out at around 20 degrees Celsius which is very nice. This cool air is going to help us offset the heat produced by the machinery in the ranches. Maintaining a steady heat at the moment is still important. We are using plants to provide some decor bonuses to our duplicants. Eventually the input water will be cooler as we've used all of the salt water up and move on to the polluted water that's come directly from the geyser itself. The temperature will drop to around about minus 10 input water and therefore the outgoing oxygen will also be decreased as well. Well that's the first job done. Spawn using renewable water supplies. Thank you. 
So we've reached a major milestone. We're going to produce some petroleum and some plastic. The access to plastic as well as steel allows us to produce some really serious cooling solutions. For example, in our base, we're going to need to set up a kitchen with some freezer utility to indefinitely extend the lifetime of the food that we produce, which on a side note is a problem I'm having at the moment. I haven't produced enough food due to a slight accident with a number of hatches dying at the same time due to old age. So it wasn't really an accident. It was me not keeping an eye on the ages of some of my hatches from right at the beginning of the game. The major thing that I'll be able to build once I have access to plastic is the steam turbine, which is the ultimate cooling solution when combined with the thermal aqua tuner. These will help me regulate temperatures in an industrial brick, which I'll build in a later episode. At the moment, I'm just gonna produce a temporary structure to refine the, the crude oil into petroleum, and then I'll turn the petroleum into plastic. The steam turbine will also allow me to access things like the copper volcano just above the structure I'm building at the moment. And I'll also be able to add a cooling solution to the hydrogen vent that I found right at the start of the game. As I've dug out the oil biome, I've come across about two containers worth of crude oil, which I have stored. This temporary structure will turn this all into petroleum and hopefully on the next episode I will build some oil wells so I have a permanent access to crude oil. I have built an airlock using crude oil and I'm going to pump out all the atmosphere in the structure because when you're refining crude oil it releases uh, methane gas which I can decide either to store or I could build some natural gas generators and burn it off immediately. But I haven't decided what to do yet, so I'm going to clean out the area first and then make a decision. So for the plan for the next episode is to take the water from the cool steam vent and feed that into three oil wells. So I've got crude oil as a renewable resource. I also need to build my kitchen and freezing area sooner rather than later so I can set up a slight overproduction of food for when I get into space travel. Well, you do need to send your dupes off with a packed lunch and snacks. Well, there's a problem. The self-powered oxygen maker isn't being supplied with cool water. Another problem with having two liquids in the same storage area I have a minimum level set up on the storage pump and the salt water has now reached this level and even though there's no water available it's stopped pumping. As this is only a temporary setup I'm not going to do any automation. I'm just going to directly turn the crude oil into petroleum and just do all of it at once. I won't be pumping out the natural gas either. The natural gas will be used as a way for the oil refiner to dump its heat into the surrounding area. The natural gas will only be pumped out once I've finished with this uh, temporary solution. At present I only have one duplicate in my gym. All the other duplicates on the map have gone through the gym and have a athletic score of at least 14. So they offset the negative of wearing the atmospheric suits quite nicely. It is nice seeing them scurrying around at full speed instead of doing the old walking on the moon slow waddle. And I finally realised this bomb isn't getting any cool water supply, so I sort that out. The gas pumps are still busy working and they've got a few more minutes work left to do. We'll set up the pipes for the oil now. Our gas pumps have created a vacuum. We're going to delete one of the pumps and turn the other pump off until it's needed at the end of the oil refining run. 
we hook up the oil refinery to the power supply and then we're going to build the plastic presses and watch the first batch of plastic being produced. And there we have the first batch of plastic being pressed. Thank you very much for watching and as always I'll see you on the other side.